Hey, Sean Jantz here, and I'm going to do a quick amount of plan for Wednesday, June 20th, and I'm going to do it on Slash CS, which is the S&P 500 and the other indices on Nadex. And I'm going to start here on Slash CS, and every single evening, I always start on the four-hour chart, as you can see right here. And that is because, as far as a day trader goes, the four-hour chart is the most important chart to understand is what is our bias on this four-hour chart. Are we overbought, are we oversold, or are we at equilibrium? Okay, and so hopefully you watched price action. Please tell me you watched um, Monday night's trade plan because it was one of the best I've ever put, not one of the best I've ever put together, but pretty much like, it, I mean, it, it, everything was perfect, right? We had a, a really nice move to the downside. We went to the tick to the negative two deviation. And we bounced right off of it, tons and tons of money uh, to be made on Tuesday, uh, riding that chart back up to the upside. So now you'll see, obviously, we made our move down, caught the four hour candle by a trigger, and now we're pretty much back to equilibrium. And I've been doing this a long time, and a lot of times after you get a, a big move, we, we had a quite a bit of a swing. We had all the way down to negative two and all the way back up to the negative and a half. It's quite a big move in one day. A lot of times what happens the day after is you kind of have like a drunken, a drunken stupor day where prices kind of moves a little bit slower. Not saying that's what's going to happen. Nothing's 100 percent, but I've been doing this a long time. That's, that's usually what happens the day after a big move is you kind of have a little bit of a consolidation day. So be prepared for that. I'm just telling you, but there's still really good edges in all of these indices that I'm going to highlight tonight. OK. So you can see, very obvious, four-hour chart, we're not overbought, we're not oversold, we're pretty much at equilibrium. So you can see clearly we have lots of room back up to the upside. Our first target and or resistance zone would be that 2780. And then we bust through that, then we got that big supply zone right there, uh, that monthly high. So we got good zones to the upside for resistance, back down to the downside, it's going to be a little bit trickier. Uh, but I mean, the big target to the downside would be 2740-ish, uh, right? Not ish zone uh, back down to the downside. And so first things first, uh, now we move to the 15-day, 15 15-minute 15 plot chart. What we're doing here is we're just looking for structure. We're looking for the best place to buy, the best place to sell. We're looking for support, resistance, supply, and demand zones. And what I always do is I start exactly where price is and then I start planning and visualizing. What am I gonna do or not do if this chart starts grinding higher? Okay, I'm gonna have a plan in place for every single zone. And then what am I going to do or not do if this chart starts grinding lower? Since we're at equilibrium, we can go either direction tomorrow. This is very, very important. We can, like I said, Tuesday night, we weren't in equilibrium. It's very obvious. You need to be looking for buy triggers. Like that was the only thing to do, right? And now we're at equilibrium, we can go either direction, we gotta be prepared. And so let's first talk about if we grind higher. So we already talked about kind of those zones on the bird's eye view, and it's, it's if we do grind higher tomorrow, it's very obvious. Our first target and or uh, resistance zone supply, it's right there, it's very obvious where it is. Uh, you got two POC cluster and a plus 0.5 deviation. So that's my first target for a nice little quick carrot trade. Now, we know that that four hour chart has lots of room to continue grinding back up uh, to this monthly high supply zone. So if this chart starts busting through plus 0.5 and holding higher lows, could be a breakout for these bulls, riding this chart back up into this POC. Friday POC plus one, Thursday, all of that supply right there. And then of course, if you miss spreading that up there, I stay patient and I can look for my sell triggers. Bears have already proven multiple times to be sellers there. So I can look for my sell, so my sell triggers at that zone. So it's very obvious what to do if we go higher, very clear cut. Um, it, it's nice when levels line up like that. It's very simple, very visual. Now, if we go lower, it's a little bit trickier. Okay, because some of these levels don't match up as clean. So if we start grinding lower, I, obviously I want to be looking for my buy triggers if we start grinding lower because we're going to be pretty oversold if we start getting down here. Our first stop, you'll notice, negative and a half Wednesday POC. But what's wrong with that zone? That zone puts us nearly in the middle of value area. And I don't want to be buying in the middle of value. That doesn't make sense to me. Okay, so I'm probably going to scratch this. And it may hold, but I don't want to put my money on it because that's right in the middle of value. And this sucker could be off to the races for the 80% roll. So I don't want to be trying to buy in the middle of value. There's no 
there's no edge there. So if I'm gonna buy this chart tomorrow on some nice little pullbacks, I'd rather stay patient for either VA lows, my first spot where we got really good demand right there, negative one deviation, bulls showed strength right there. And so I gotta be ready. Uh, that's my favorite pullback buy zone. And then if these bears show strength again, which is very unlikely that they'll do that, okay, but if Trump keeps tweeting about tariffs and stuff like that, we may see another dumps bill. And if we do, it's the exact same strategy, exact same trade plan. Uh, as Monday night. You just do the math to get the negative one and a half and the negative two and I'm looking for I'm looking for my at the money buy triggers down in here. If we if, if this sucker just tanks overnight, I'm looking for my at the money buy triggers on the negative and a half and negative two. Just do the math to get them. Okay. So very clear cut if we go higher, be a little bit careful. Not careful but understand, make sure you're using your indicators, higher lows uh, for your quick buy triggers off of these zones if we go lower, okay? And how I wanna quickly show you slash in Q, definitely probably my favorite chart tomorrow, slash in Q. We're literally, pit, we're, per, we're picture perfect at equilibrium. If we grind higher, our first cell zone, very obvious, plus 0.5, second cell zone's gonna put us right there, back at that high right there. We grind lower, first buy trigger right there, value rate high, negative and a half deviation, it's perfect, and then you can use negative and a half as the breakout. Get through, continue holding lower highs, 80% rule to the downside, wins APOC, negative one, value rate low, demand, bunch of consolidation. You missed the 80% rule, there's my second buy trigger zone. Very obvious, very clear, love this chart for tomorrow. I love when zones just match up beautifully like this. It makes it so clear and visual. And then slash RTY, good chart for, and when I say good chart, uh, one thing I like about slash RTY is we had quite a bit of volatility in this market. You'll notice that we're back to all-time highs. So pretty much the only thing to currently do is look for sell triggers where price currently is. We're back at this massive supply, all-time high. And so if we do continue grinding higher, price has never, ever, ever, ever since the beginning of time been trading up here. And so it's I'm not your daddies, you can do whatever you want, but I'm just gonna tell you, expect lower win ratios if you're gonna be trading where areas of the chart where there's no context or structure to the left. Now, this, this chart's obviously bullish, fantastic range low, so, and then we got a huge volume POC cluster right there at value rate low. Four POCs all on top of each other. So we can use that as a potential target. I know negative and a half is right there, and there actually is pretty good, look at this a massive inflection on that negative and a half. The problem I'm having with it though is that it's right in the middle of value. I don't think that's a deep enough pullback for me to look for, buy, or at least not a deep enough pullback for me to put my money on it. If I were to buy this chart tomorrow, I'm staying patient for this POC VA low. We're just right there off of 1680 and that uh, range low right there. That is a massive, massive range low demand. And so I don't, in, you know, when you look at where price currently is, this is the middle. I don't want to be fiddling in the middle. I want to be trading up here and trading down here. I don't want to be bought messing around fiddling in the middle, okay? So I like these charts for tomorrow. I think we're going to get a little bit of a, um, you know, drunken stupor the next day because all these charts made some pretty large moves, hefty, hefty volume. And then usually what happens the next day, we get a slower uh, range bound market. So not that's on 100%. I'm just telling you, I've been doing this a long time, that's usually what happens. If we get more, but if we get a lot of volatility, that's good news, okay? And so then they're probably likely gonna be moving all into these zones here. And the good thing about BTG charts is all these deviations are based off of current day's volatility. So as volatility increases, which it just did, these, these deviation levels change with it. That's why these deviation levels are so powerful because they change with the volatility. And then the value rate box changes with the volume. That's why this is a dynamic trading strategy and not a static one. If you have a static trading strategy, you're going to get your ass handed to you when volatility increases like it is. But when volatility increases, everything just changes with these deviation levels. So comment if you have any questions. Make sure that you are recording and posting all pictures of your trades in the group and in the chat room so that you can get feedback from me and from others.